Good morning. I'm Reverend Kathy. Welcome to Unity North Spiritual Center here in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Whether you are in person or online with us, we're glad you're here. And we are an inclusive community. We welcome and accept all people. So whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual path, you're welcome to Unity North. We're also part of a greater worldwide unity movement. We are the publishers of the Daily Word magazine and we've been holding 133 years of prayer vigil through Silent Unity, the prayer ministry of the Unity Movement. So prayer is the heart and soul of unity. And Susan Marie Lawler is our prayer chaplain available after service for you. And she's there waving online. So welcome, Susan Marie. And if you need prayer support after service, you'd like to have her just pray with you about a particular matter or just in general, um, feel free to give her a call. Her number will show up on the chat and in announcements. And she's available for about an hour or so after service. And um, what the chaplains do if they don't get calls, they, they stay in the space of prayer and continue to pray for our community and for our world. And so uh, it's, a, it's a very nice service. So thank you, Susan Marie. All right, and um, today our producers are Brandy and Nancy. There they are waving. Thank you. 
And our worship assistant, assistant is Wendy. And we're happy to have Judy Benar return as always to sing in church like this. Right. And before we do our opening song, let's uh, speak our vision and mission together. Together on the vision, centered in prayer, we create for all a world of love, harmony, and abundance. And our mission is celebrating spirit, exploring truths, awakening hearts, inspiring dreams, serving community. And the values you see are our core foundational beliefs here at Unity North. And with that, I invite you to stand for our opening song. Thank you, Judy. That's a wonderful song. Good morning to everyone. I am Wendy Erickson, your worship assistant today. And this is the time in our service when we greet one another. So if you're on Zoom, turn on your cameras if you are able. Um, so who's joining us for the first time on Zoom? Can you wave to us, let us know? Hmm? I think we have what we call the old timers. So, um, if you're in the sanctuary and new, can you let us know that you are here? I, I don't see anyone new. All right. So let us take a minute and just kind of greet one another very briefly. Wave. We're not going to get up and hug. It'll take forever. Um, so, <laughs> um, but it is our great delight to have all of you with us today. So thank you. And if you want to wave to the folks, we have the camera up there. So. So after meeting and greeting ourselves, we're going to take this time for prayer requests. Let's take a breath or two to further center ourselves. As that centering started with the time that we took to greet one another. As you breathe in, bring peace, love, and joy within and releasing the stress, worry, and fear on your exhales. And instead of saying, our requests out loud, we invite you to speak a name or prayer request silently in the sanctuary or aloud in the privacy of your home. And we are going to hold these requests as you state them now in silence.
We give thanks in advance for answered prayers, and we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Please remain seated and centered as I read our daily word. Sunday, October 22nd, 2023, is grace. I walk in grace and peace today. I give thanks for the activity of God in my life that appears as grace. This divine gift manifests as the beauty of the world and the people in it, and as the comforting presence of God within and around me each day. I do not have to do anything to earn grace because it does not result from my attitude or actions. It flows from the infinite love of God within every person and surrounding every circumstance. It is the indwelling presence that sustains me in challenging times and lifts me in good times. I accept grace with gratitude when I have stumbled along life's path and received unexpected blessings. This boundless love fills my heart with bliss and peace. I live in the presence of infinite love, believing each unfolding event in my life is leading me to my highest good. And from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, my grace is sufficient for you. Today's daily word for October 22nd is grace. I walk in grace and peace today. I release and I let go. Let the Spirit rule my life and my heart. I'm only here for God. No more sorrow, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit rule my life. In my heart, is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more sorrow, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm I invite you now to sit back and close your eyes to prepare for meditation. Allow me to speak the words for you, taking them in as your own. As I begin to relax, I feel my muscles relaxing, beginning with my feet, relaxing my legs, up to my hips, my abdomen, the trunk of my body. I feel that rela relaxation up through my spine, into my chest, and all the way up my back to my shoulders. I relax my shoulders, my arms, my hands, back up to my neck, my scalp, my face, my jaw muscles. I say to myself, I am completely and totally relaxed. And I feel this wave of relaxation dissolving all tension in my body. I am at peace. And in this state of relaxation, I know my life has not been a vain wandering, but a wonderful and marvelous journey toward the divine light, which my soul has always remembered, even while my conscious mind may have been unaware. 
For eons I have searched and wandered through the plains of earthly questing, steadily and surely being prodded to the reawakening of my soul's purpose. I know that my limits are nothing more than my idea of what I've already done. They have nothing to do with what I can and will do. For all of my seeking, striving, and learning has led me to this point. And I claim the divine kingdom, queendom as my own. The riches of the universe belong to me. I am attuned to the great divine order of the universe. That same order that causes the planets to rotate in their orbits without crashing into each other. That same order that causes the right and perfect temperature on this planet so all of life can survive. I call upon the spiritual power of order right now and know this order is at work in every area of my life. I no longer question this order because it is divine. It's even beyond my comprehension, so I trust. And I call upon my spiritual power of release, elimination or renunciation. I release that which is not for my highest good. I release that which is not in perfect divine order. I know that as I let go, God's amazing grace reveals itself. So I take a moment in the silence to relax into that grace. I release, I let go, and let God in the silence. I know that everything unfolds according to a cosmic plan and that we are all part of a great divine order. Thank you, God, for this wondrous universe and for our amazing spiritual powers. Thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.
Until I find the road to you. Thank you, Judy. What a great song. Some of you may have wondered why we did Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. <laughs> it has to do with the Bible story today. Well, there comes a time when the current order of our lives becomes commonplace and our soul longs for more. We may not even be conscious of the fact that our soul has this inner desire, but there is in each of us a divine presence which propels us into wholeness, to an enlightened state of being. And coming to this state, mythically, is described as taking the journey home. First, there's the preparation for the journey, then the journey itself, and finally the return. So we're either at home, or leaving home, or, or returning home. And we have explored these first four archetypes that symbolize the powers within us in our seven-week series. This is week four, but each one stands on its own. And these are the innocent, the orphan, the warrior, and the caregiver. And these four prepare us with a strong ego structure, psychologically speaking, so we can then encounter the deeper mysteries to be experienced in the next phase of the journey. The idea is that we have developed enough faith, enough judgment or discernment, enough strength and courage, and enough compassion and willingness to preserve life in all of its forms. And then we are called to the journey, to a greater 
divine order. And as a seeker venturing forth on a journey, we inevitably have to release and let go, thus facing the archetypal destroyer. And while the seeker is order, the destroyer is release, letting go, elimination, often called renunciation. These two archetypes and powers work together. And order is not just about things being more orderly, but a more cosmic experience, a bigger picture of divine order. Sometimes it feels like order and chaos go hand in hand. Let me give you an example of the chaos that ensues when even an alphabet letter or word is out of order in a church bulletin. You've heard some of these before. I think some of these are, are new ones I hadn't seen for a while. Applications are now being accepted for two-year-old nursery workers. <laughs> the pastor will preach his farewell message after which the choir will sing, break forth into joy. Please place your donation in the envelope along with the deceased persons you want remembered. <laughs> Let us join David and Lisa in the celebration of their wedding and bring their happiness to a conclusion. <laughs> the co concert held in Fellowship Hall was a great success. Special thanks are due to the minister's daughter who labored the whole evening at the piano, which as usual fell upon her. <laughs> the audience is asked to remain seated until the end of the recession. <laughs> the choir invites any member of the congregation who enjoys sinning to join the choir. <laughs> and the church will host an evening of fine dining, superb entertainment, and gracious hostility. <laughs> so a little chaos when things are out of order. So we are called to the journey to be a seeker of a greater divine order. Joseph Campbell, the famous mythologist, refers to it as the call to adventure. The call rings up the curtain on the mystery of transfiguration, a rite, a moment of spiritual passage, which when complete, amounts to a dying and a birth. And the familiar life horizon has been outgrown. The old concepts, the old ideals, the old emotional patterns no longer fit. So the herald or the announcement of the adventure may be a person who just shows up, a phone call, perhaps a loss, a divorce, even a death some other crisis. If you've been through a divorce, you can probably take a look back into the past and find an incident, a thought, a person, an animal, perhaps, who heralded the beginning of the end. There are many, many stories of this call to adventure. We all know about Alice who chased a rabbit into Wonderland where she then learned the mysteries of herself. For me, one call was killing a deer with my car, which ended up being the herald announcing the ending of my marriage and the beginning of my ministry. So these heralds come and give us a sign that something new is coming. Certainly if you've fallen in love, there was a point perhaps when you looked into someone's eyes and you experience the call then as a sense of knowing, a sense of destiny, a sense of greater order to come. Or maybe you at times have moved to a different geographical area. And prior to that, something happened. Maybe you lost a job or you got a promotion. And perhaps the Herald was your boss saying, we're, we're sending you to Colorado to take over the office. It needs to be straightened out. People are, there are in a mess. They don't know what they're doing, and we need you there. And then you have to release your old life. This is kind of like Gandalf showing up in Lord of the Rings and telling Bilbo to take his journey to the dragon's lair to get the jewels. 
Or it's like God saying to Moses, go into Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let the people go. Free the Israelites from captivity. Well, Moses is the Old Testament archetypal figure who represents law and order. He is the seeker. And we have the first four patriarchs of the Old Testament corresponding to the first four archetypes. And they are Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And the, they are the innocent, the orphan, the warrior, and the caregiver. So Joseph was the caregiver, and he reconciled with his brothers who sold him into slavery. We talked about him last week. He saved all of Egypt from famine, and then he reconciled with his brothers and brought his whole extended family down into Egypt into a place called Goshen, which means unity. And they lived there for many years. They had children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and these Hebrew people lived in Egypt for 400 years. But over this time period, new pharaohs emerged. And soon Joseph was forgotten. And the Hebrew people became a threat. And so they were forced to be slaves to the pharaohs and the Egyptians. And that is when Moses, the seeker, was called forth. 400 years after Joseph, he was called by the Spirit of God within him and told to go free the Israelites from bondage. We can say that Moses is the most important figure in the Old Testament because he is the bringer of law and order. And whenever we talk about law, we're talking about the law of cause and effect. And order, of course, is divine order. So he represents that in each one of us. And he had to overcome the resistance of Pharaoh or ego in order to free the Israelites. Metaphysically, we say they are the illumined thoughts undergoing spiritual discipline. They were led out of Egypt, sense consciousness, where we suffer from limitation, sickness, poverty, and unhappiness. And as Moses and the newly freed captives reached the banks of the Red Sea, they looked back and they saw Pharaoh and his armies coming directly for them. And they grew very fearful and wondered, why did we even leave? Why didn't we just say, say at least we were safe? And doesn't that happen to us sometimes when we subdue our egos and our fears? and start going forward, and then suddenly, there they are again. Here they come again, circling back. But Moses said these very famous words to the people. He said, fear not, stand still, excuse me, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be still. And it's something we can all remember when we fear our journeys, our calls to change. Fear not, stand firm, be still. God is in charge. All is in divine order. And that's a great affirmation. Fear not, stand firm, be still. God is in charge. All is in divine order. So the waters of the Red Sea drowned the pursuing Egyptians at Moses' command. When we call forth the cleansing power of release and affirmation, we dissolve negativity from consciousness. This was followed by a time in the wilderness until Moses was given the Ten Commandments which is an understanding of divine law. As we overcome old ways of thinking, we move into a deeper understanding of the law, and order becomes manifest in our inner and outer lives. So the Hebrew people wandered in the wilderness for 40 years looking for the, the promised land. In unity, we say 40 means as long as it takes. 
We wander as long as it takes. And they made it to the border of the promised land, and there Moses died. He was never allowed to enter because law and order, which he symbolizes, can only take us to the gates of the promised land or enlightened consciousness. It is the destroyer and the power of release and elimination that helps us to enter and achieve spiritual realization. Because ultimately, the destroyer will remove anything remaining in consciousness that prevents our spiritual awakening. <clears throat> the destroyer is all about the spiritual power of elimination or release. Some call it renunciation. It includes loss, death, and grief. We know each archetype has its shadow side, and this particular one symbolizes the entire shadow side of human consciousness as well. This power allows us to release that which is not for our highest good. It includes sacrifice, forgiveness, letting go, and the grace that comes at such times. And it's through this archetype that we find grace and awakening. And at it's, its highest level of letting go, the destroyer gives us the ability to release anything that no longer supports our values, our life, <clears throat> our growth, or that of others. So in that sense, it becomes our ally. So this archetype is paradoxical because in it we find our deepest fears and we are also saved by the power of grace. So Moses died at the border, and then Joshua took the Hebrews into the promised land. And the word Joshua is Hebrew for Jesus. Joshua was an Old Testament form of Jesus, not fully developed, but nevertheless symbolizing the destroyer and elimination of grace. So we move from law Moses to grace Joshua. And very often we are freed from karmic law by the power of grace. So Joshua leads his people across the Jordan River and there were priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant across in which the tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments were kept. You all remember this Ark from Indiana Jones and, and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? If you don't know what it looks like, remember that movie or watch it again. <laughs> well, the laws take them with us into the promised land. And we're not trying to get rid of the law by moving into grace. We honor both. So Joshua's first task was to overthrow the city of Jericho, which was a walled city. And the Hebrews had no weapons. What a concept. Going to war with no weapons. So Joshua instructed seven priests to walk before the Ark of the Covenant, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns, followed by the men of war. Once a day for six days, the procession marched around the city, and on the seventh day they marched seven times, and then the priests blew their trumpets, and all the men of war shouted with a mighty shout, and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Well, Jericho represents the material side of our consciousness as distinct from the spiritual side, which is symbolized by Jerusalem. So overthrowing the city of Jericho, according to Fillmore, is cleansing and activating the seven chakras in order to overcome sense consciousness and experience inner realization. Seven represents physical completion, while 12 represents spiritual completion. So the story of Joshua includes a great deal of war and slaughter. And we've always been told in this culture that Joshua was a hero and a good guy who finally led his people into the promised land but what's always been downplayed is that Joshua and his people annihilated the people living in Canaan, the promised land. 
And these people were peaceful worshipers of the goddess. This was descriptive of the final desecration of the goddess cultures, putting patriarchy firmly in place. So even in telling it, we need to destroy the old story of one side being good and the other bad by bringing it out of the shadow into the light and telling the truth about it. And isn't that going on in our world today with Israel and Palestinian people seemingly on opposite sides and Hamas and even Netanyahu in the destroyer role also between Ukraine and Russia and Putin in the destroyer role. There are aspects of the destroyer on both sides and there is good on both sides. So we watch another war with two sides in our US Congress and a destroyer trying to control the show while some cry for greater order. You can see this playing out before us. Well, I will never forget a particular experience I had back in 2015 when I attended the Southwest Unity Regional Conference in Palm Springs, California. I was living in Southern California at the time. And one presentation led me on a journey through both destroyer and seeker archetypes. I felt them profoundly, as you may also when I explain. This speaker was Scarlett Lewis. She was the mother of Jesse Lewis, the six-year-old hero who died at the Sandy Hook School shooting in Connecticut on December 14, 2012. I will not take you through all the details she told us because there's not time and much of it was difficult. But I do want to share part of this because although sad, it's also deeply inspirational. I've really never forgotten that talk. In summary, the day started like any other for her, and you never think something like this is going to happen to you. She was at work, and she learned from a text and some co-workers that something was going on at Sandy Hook School. She ended up there in the chaos, and her family began to arrive. And they had to wait all day, and she didn't hear the sad <clears throat> truth until about 4 p.m., which angered many people. But she was actually glad that it was that late because for her, it allowed the information to seep in slowly and become a gradual dawning and then a final realization. And even before they came and told her, her 12-year-old son began to cry and say, this is not going to be okay, we're not going to be okay. And she felt herself lift out of her body and hover above, watching her say to him, yes, we are going to be okay, because we know where Jesse is, he is with Jesus and is safe now. And then she came back into her body and wondered who that stranger was who said that to her oldest son. After she felt she never wanted to go home to her farmhouse again where she lived with her two sons. She was divorced and her ex-husband lived nearby she couldn't bear it, so she went to stay with family for a time. And the next day, while she was just home grieving, or at her family's house grieving for her son, she got a text from her ex-husband saying that Jesse was on the front page of a magazine named A Hero. And it turns out he was behind the shooter when the shooter ran out of ammunition. So Jesse told the kids to run. And six of the kids did, and they lived, but Jesse did not make it. They learned also that he actually rushed the shooter, so they called him a hero, which he was. So Scarlett was shocked to learn that the shooter killed 26 people that day, 20 children and six adults, although really 28 since he killed his mother before he got there and then himself in the end. His name was Adam Lanza. And she said he was not an it, which so many parents have called these school shooters, but he was rather a human being in pain 
needing attention and love. He had attended Sandy Hook Elementary School himself, and in the sixth grade, he wrote a book about a witch who came to Sandy Hook with a broomstick. It opened up and became a semi-automatic. He took the book to school and it was ignored. His mother tried to get him help for his emotional and his social problems and did not find the needed help. Since that day, she said, there have been one or more school shootings per week. If it's happening to our children, it's happening to us. And this applies to the war we are seeing now as well. It is the children who suffer most, and it's heart-wrenching to see. We're really watching the destroyer in action. But 49% um, of our youth have a diagnosable mental illness by age 18, and the average onset age for anxiety in our country is age 6. Scarlett said the Sandy Hook shooting began with an angry thought. It escalated into rage, and the wiring in the brain of Adam Lanza changed. She said, if we can become conscious of what we are thinking about and change one angry or negative thought into a loving thought per day, we can change our lives. When the destroyer visits in such a way, we all have choices that we make. And Scarlett Lewis took both an inner and an outer journey. She returned to her farmhouse to get Jesse's clothes for the funeral. And as she and JT, her 12-year-old son at the time, were leaving the house, she glanced over and she saw that Je six-year-old Jesse had left a final message on the chalkboard. Three words, nurturing, healing, love. She was blown away. She said, this is not the vernacular of a six-year-old. He'd also left a message on his more serious older brother's dresser in a little note. It said, be sure to have fun. She believes that his soul knew he would not be around much longer. Even his last pictures revealed that. And she showed us a number of them. And the one that I remember most is he was, he, it was a picture of himself in an army helmet, a hard army helmet, a war helmet. And there was black all around, but he was going forward toward this golden door that had golden light radiating out the sides of it. It was amazing to see. So she began to journal, and the outcome was a book that was published within a year, and its cover is the photo of that chalkboard message. And it's called Nurturing Healing Love. She's been on an amazing journey since. She became an author. That year, she met Obama four different times. She started a foundation called Choose Love, helping schools, prisoners, and people everywhere to choose love over anger and violence. She's traveled all over the world and met countless people. She found her purpose to spread this message of choosing love and compassion, not anger or violence. But it was all at the expense of her son's life, which she would do anything to have back in a moment. But in the meantime, early on, her older 12-year-old son, JT, was losing it. He was depressed, he was angry and lethargic, he refused to go to school, and she wasn't going to force him because his brother never returned from school. She didn't know how to help him. But his divine order would have it some orphans, genocide survivors from Rwanda, read the story of Sandy Hook and reached out to JT to help him. They called him on Skype. Eight-year-old Chantel told him how neighbors broke into her home, killed her family. She hid among the bodies 
so she could dig her way out and make it to an orphanage. She told JT that she began to feel gratitude and encouraged him to forgive so he did not go down the same path as the shooter. A young boy, Matthew, told JT he hid in the hills and ate grass for three months after his family was killed. He later walked two hours twice a day to go to school. These children told JT to go the way of forgiveness and compassion. So JT and his mother Scarlett talked and decided to forgive the shooter, Adam. They made a list. And JT said, those kids reached out to me in love, and I'm going to reach out to them too. So he began writing a journal. He started a New Town Helps Rwanda Project Light organization. He went back to school and he started selling arm bracelets at games. And through that act of giving, he began to heal. He raised enough money to send one of the Rwanda orphans to college. When the weight of your giving exceeds that of your pain, that is when the healing begins. When the weight of your giving exceeds that of your pain, that is when the healing begins. Scarlett and JT went to speak to hardcore prisoners, those who were considered lost causes, murderers, rapists, gang members, and the prisoners had to sign releases to be filmed. But they all told the warden they did not want to since they were known on the streets and their lives could be forfeit. But in, before the visit, they all had to read Scarlett's book. And after they did, each one signed the release. By the end of the difficult conversation, they had all committed to choosing love over anger and violence. One of the other blessings Scarlett had from her journey was meeting inspirational writer Wayne Dyer. He read her book and invited her to lunch. She said he was standing at the stop, top of a staircase with his arms held out, and she just walked into them. And he didn't say, oh, I'm sorry, or the usual comments. He said, can you feel him? And she said, yes, with the in and around me all the time. And he said, well, I just saw him walk up the steps with you. Scarlett and Wayne Dyer were going to do a walk through Jerusalem, but Wayne Dyer passed away unexpectedly before they could, and she ended up speaking at his memorial service instead. But she had a formula. She said, the formula is courage plus gratitude plus forgiveness plus compassion in action. Courage plus gratitude plus forgiveness plus compassion in action. And she said, along with that, we need to remember PTG, post-traumatic growth, trauma's potential to transform us in positive ways. And that is what she as a seeker learned on her journey. And it is the letting go and the grace inherent in the archetype of the destroyer. So this week I invite you to remember to affirm divine order. Two words one of the best affirmations, divine order. Let's say that together. Divine order. And also to say the one that goes with release, I now release, I let go, and let God. Together, I now release, I let go, and let God. So let us answer our calls and make a choice for nurturing healing love. May we have the courage to face our fears, to let go, to make a change, and to take our journeys into an ever greater divine order. God bless you. Thank you.
song where I'd invite you to sing along in parts of it. And it's written by a local gal named Barbara McAfee. And the words that I want you to recall are the chorus. And they are, I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. And I'll sing that twice between each verse. So join me if you want to. Or if you don't wanna sing, just go. There are songs in the soil and the rivers and trees and the ears of your heart can hear them. And some come alive in the meeting of eyes when you take the time to see them. I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. There are songs in my bones won't leave me alone, calling for creation and tunes that ride on the whispering wind, seeking incarnation. I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. There are songs in the clouds that shout out loud in the dark voice of the thunder, and some that flash in the cool blue fire that splits the sky asunder. I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. There are songs that ride on the dancing tides that swirl through all the oceans and some that sleep in the bitter seed that grief will set in motion. I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. I will listen to the deeper story. I will see how life's gonna move in me. Thank you, Judy. That was really good. Now is the time in our service to bless our offerings. Since we are collecting them live, we invite you to go to our website, unitynorthmn.org, and find the donation button on the home page. That's what it looks like. Um, and you can give your offering there. For those of you in our building, we do have a basket where you can leave your offering in the back as the door is when you exit the sanctuary. If you prefer to mail a check, you can find our address on the website as well. Now let us speak our offering blessing together. Join me. Divine love flowing through me now blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Judy will lead us in our offering song. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Thank you to Judy and to everyone. And we now have announcements. 
our prayer chaplain today is Susan Marie Lawler. Phone number we you can see on our screen, 612-8050, little 850-2129. The next thing we have is our Holly Jolly Virtual Holiday Auction, which is from Sunday, November 12th to Sunday, December 3rd. These, there are donation forms for the auction that are still being accepted through November 5th. We have extended that deadline an additional week to fill out your auction form, but sending it early will help. So do it as quick as you can. And we know it's early to think about Christmas presents, but you'll be glad you did. Look on our website for ideas. Last year we had 53 items and we raised $2,000. 53 items, $2,000, not bad. But we want to exceed that today or for this year. So let's hold that thought with us that we will be exceeding our goal of donations <laughs> and of what we are given in return. For donation form is at our website, you know, unitynorthmn.org slash donation form. There we go. You can just find it. And the next one should be the 1619 project. Yes. This is about race and education in the United States, and it starts tomorrow with Rada Italiano, our licensed unity teacher, It'll be Mondays for six weeks. It's hybrid, so in person and in Zoom. We'll be discussing democracy, race, citizenship, and justice. So register online and go to unitynorthmn.org, the, the 1619 project. So you can also email Brandy. Special music during next week's Sunday service. And that's uh, Sunday service, October 29th. This is obviously in honor of my birthday. Brooklyn Big Band. We have a whole bunch of people who have birthdays left early to two. There's lots, lots of them. So the 18th piece Brooklyn Big Band was founded in 2006 and North Hennepin Community College Jazz Ensemble Director David Marantini will be here with them. They play big band jazz arrangements of Christian hymn tunes and also classic standard and modern jazz music Come and hear this 18-piece band, band play during our regular Sunday service. I can't wait. Not a concert. They'll, they'll be doing the service song. They're doing they're, it's the service, yeah. yeah. Um, and 12 days later, oh. November 10th. Is that here? Okay, there it is. All right. Yes, 12 days later, a special class is coming with director Dave Mantini. What I have on my paper is a little different than what you see, so I apologize. It's the history of rock and roll. So that'll be Friday, November 10th at 7 p.m. live here um, in the sanctuary. Our suggested love offering is 20, and make it a fun night about, um, by learning something new about an amazing era. So you can register again at uh, unitynorthmn.org at rock and roll. And there we go. That's going to be wonderful. Okay, and the next thing we have, I want to make sure, Family Table drive through this Thursday, October 26th at 5 p.m. So and if you want to help in PAC service, please contact Kathleen Bailey. It's our turkey meal. It's the big one. So we will have Thanksgiving service on Sunday, November 19th at 10.30 a.m. So let us give thanks and also collectively acknowledge all of our volunteers. And the following Sunday, November 26th, is Thanksgiving weekend, and we are going to have a potluck and a special storytelling time. So join us right after Sunday service. We share a meal together. Stories of family, humor, and gratitude will start at 12.30 p.m. Uh, following the potluck. So far, we've got Noel Levine, Donna Snyder, and Mary Sorensen will be giving us some of their stories and of gifts of story and humor. And Amy and Adams are our musicians, and they will be staying with us to provide more music. So we're going to have some sign-up sheets for the potluck, and they'll be out soon. Sunday, November 12th, from 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., in person only, new member class with Reverend Kathy and Rhonda Italiano. It's open to all for the curious, those who want to join, and those who want to renew their expired membership, if you've been away for more than a year, or if you just want to hang out and re review membership info, you're welcome. So again, just register. Um, at the Unity North new member class or email Brandy. 
And next week, Halloween costumes are optional. Sort of. <laughs> Thank you. And next we're going to read our um, affirmation. All right. So it's on our board here, and everyone else can see it online. Centered in prayerful intention, we give thanks for an overflowing abundance of spiritual awakening, prosperity, new members, and children for Unity North Spiritual Center. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you to all. Thank you. Um, to our producers today, Brandy and Nancy, give my hand. And to Wendy, and special thank you to our musician, Judy. Wonderful music. And I invite you to stand for our prayer for protection and our peace now. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our creator, family all we. Let us walk with each other. Let this be the moment. 